All right, welcome back to another moment of Photoshop. Um, doing a video response here to a question posed by Elenita. Thank you, Elenita, for your question and for your file and your work. Um, we're looking at Elenita's file here. And the question is um, how to options for um, doing the treatment on these letters. The letters were done with um, shapes, so vector shape. Um, <clears throat> and the question was in particular with the letters E and A, the um, holes have been cut out, or let's see how they've been constructed. Uh, this is the E, yeah, this is the E shape. We can see that it's a shape because of this little icon right here. Um, and if I select this layer and go to paths, then I should see the shape path for the shape on this layer. So this is now a shape layer. Um, and it looks like there's a layer right above it, clipped. That's what this arrow is about. Um, clipped to this layer and it contains Layer 8 contains the work that cuts out the, uh, the space in the E form. So this is the actual shape. Um, and it looks like, you know, a, a little bit of this brown tone in the shape of the E has been created and, and attached, basically. <clears throat> so what it means is that this is, let's see. This little piece here is its own independent piece, right? So it's actually not part of the letter E. Um, where'd it go? It's gone. Okay. And if I unclip it, um, option click this layer, I can drag it, and then you can see that, you know, it's just its own independent graphic element. Um, <clears throat> so, are there other ways to do this? Um, yes, there are. Um, is this a good way to do this? Um, it's fine. It works. But there are some issues, right? It probably took a bunch of time to do all this. Um, so, we can talk about alternatives that may take less time. The other, the other piece is that now you've got all these different components which have to be managed together. <clears throat> so for instance, if I want to move this around, I've got to um, command click so that I can select multiple layers, get both of these guys, and then move them. But if I moved, if I wanted to move this type, you know, over here, you see that the cutout effect no longer works because, you know, the, um, the background is darker. So I'd have to redo that. So, um, yeah, there's some sustainability issues in this design decision. So let's talk about um, other ways to do this. <clears throat> um, and my main recommendation would be to explore the, um, uh, the shape layer mask. So in the same way that a regular layer can take a layer mask, a shape layer can also take a mask that will mask whatever's happening on the shape. So just to demonstrate that, I will make a selection, which is gonna be this cutout. I'll use, I'll just use this magic wand tool. I'm gonna um, select this area, and I just selected the work that has been done um, in, this, in this clipping mask layer, um, clipping layer. But um, it could, you know, this selection could be made in any way. I could, I could freestyle it. I could create another path. I could um, use my um, selection tools, you know, maybe this um, lasso tool, whatever it is. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to select that. Now you'll see when I go to the shape layer for the E, I have some options here. Um, if I click this layer mask icon, um, you know, something happens. It's now masked 
pretty much everything. Um, but if I go back and I invert my selection here, Command Shift I to invert the selection. So instead of selecting that little hole in the E, I'm selecting everything but it. Let me turn this clipping mask off so that you can see here's the shape. Now if I execute the layer mask on this shape, it has now created that the same end result um, visually um, is now cut out as a layer mask. Um, however, it's a little bit more advanced because if I move this type around, um, it's a true it's a true cutout. So the background to whatever this E is on is going to show through the hole. So I would say that that's a lot faster. Um, so here's an A here. Let's find the A. Here's the A. And yes, that's also cut out. So we'll go to layer nine. We'll just do this again. I'm gonna select the work that's been done for the false cutout because that's actually, um, it looks like it's the background just sampled or cloned on top of the shape. Um, so I'll select that, hide that layer, invert my selection, and then go back to my shape layer, and then I'm gonna choose this um, layer mask. Also, when I'm in this shape layer, when I've selected this layer, and Photoshop knows that there's a shape path on it, it gives me this whole properties panel. There's also a little icon right here that is the same thing as this one. It's to add a layer mask, so I'm gonna click that instead. And there we go, we've got a, um, We've got a layer mask applied to this shape of an A. Um, I can move it around now, which is makes it very convenient. I can go to this title group and move, oops, move the whole thing around. And the masks cutting out the um, shapes come with me to wherever I want to place this. So. I'd recommend um, checking out the shape layer mask feature um, when you're using, when you're creating shapes, vector shapes um, from paths. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good one.